Hi, I'm Alicia, and I'm going to teach you how to organize your slugs with custom punch-outs. This is a common request I've seen in people wanting to dictate specific chits to go on specific slugs in their game. This may be for larger orders you intend to split yourself, or if you just want specific layouts in your game. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. However, both will require a vector program, an optimization tool, and to have your chits already designed in the shapes you want. Using the image editor of your choice, you're first going to download the PNGs or SVG templates of the chit you want, as well as the SVG cutting pattern. I'll show you where to get those. From the main page of the site, click Make, and then Products. We're going to click Punch Outs. And for this example, let's download the medium circle chits and the medium square tiles. We're going to download the PNG and the SVG cutting pattern. Repeat the same thing for the medium square tiles, get the PNG and the SVG cutting pattern. Using that PNG, you're going to design your image files. You'll see that I've already done this here. These are all my medium circle chits, and this one image is going to be my square tile. In your vector program, open both of these SVGs. But we'll start with the medium circle chit one. This SVG is the cutting pattern used by the game crafter to make this slug. We're going to utilize this to make our own custom punch out. Doing this will allow us to organize this however we like. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to lock the cut file. I'm going to drop this layer down below so I can see what I'm doing. In this example, let's say I just want these three characters. We always be grouped on this slug together. I'm going to go ahead and line these up. They're in the center. Because we started with a template that was already designed for this, all your shapes should line up perfectly. Because we used a template, our chits are already set up with the needed bleed, so we don't have to worry about any of that. I'm going to go ahead and copy these and add them to the rest of the slug. Once you've arranged these how you want, hide the cut lines. And we're going to save this image. Click File, Export, Export As, and we're going to select PNG. Make sure to select Use Artboard, and we're going to name this Medium Circle Chits Face, and let's export. I'm deciding that the background is going to be white, and I'll click OK. We've now made the face image. Now we need to make the back. The back for custom punch outs is always flipped left to right, which means anything on this side on the back will be on this side. Well, because we don't want this one to be on the back of this one, we need to swap everything. So we're going to take these, we're going to cut them, we're going to take these and move them over, bring these back in and do the same. So now they're swapped. This means that when printed, the gray will be on the back of the gray, the blue on the back of the blue, and the yellow on the back of the yellow. Let's hide that cut line again. And we'll go ahead and export this the same way as before. Use Artboard. And we're going to use the same naming scheme. We're going to type back. And click Save, or Export. So now we have all the files we need for this laid out custom punch out. We don't even have to make an SVG cut file because we can use the cutting pattern we download as that SVG. I'm going to show you one more way of doing this and then I'll show you how to upload everything. In this next example, we're going to open that SVG we had previously for that square tile. And we're going to take one of these square tiles and we're going to copy it. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to paste it in here. Now, because this has already been split and it had nicks added, this is technically mul multiple paths. I'm just going to group it so it stays together, and I'm going to center the design. 
Now, because we wanna make sure that this has enough room for bleed, we're gonna drag this up and we're gonna align it right here. Because we already know that there's enough space between these two shapes, we'll know there's enough room for bleed. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this layer, go back to the layer with all the other shapes, and let's delete these ones. I now have a slug that's gonna have a medium square tile and six medium circle chits. Because we've already designed our images using those PNG templates, we can drop those in here and everything will line up great. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. I'm gonna lock the cutting patterns. And let's drop in our shapes. In this case, I want all of these. And then we're just gonna add everything where it needs to be. I'm gonna center this to make sure it's centered. Let's go ahead and bring it up until it centers on that shape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in all these shapes here, just like I did before. Now if you're not sure if something is centered, you can always use the center alignment tool on whatever you have in the middle and then align everything to that. That'll ensure everything is lined up well and has a good amount of bleed. Once you have your punch out designed how you want, we're gonna go ahead and export this image file. Hide the cut lines. And just like before, we're gonna go file, export, export as. I'm gonna save this as a PNG. Now, because this isn't just medium circle chits, let's give it a new name. We'll call it chits and tile base. And let's go ahead and export that and save. Now remember when making the back file for this, we need to have things flipped left to right. So that means these over here need to be over here and vice versa. So I'm just gonna select these, turn back on those cut lines so I can see what I'm doing, cut them, move these over, paste, and move these over. We've now made the back. So let's go ahead and hide those cut lines again. While export, export as, use artboard, and again, using the same type of naming scheme, we're gonna have this say back instead of face. Now the main difference between this method and the first method I showed you is that we do have to save this SVG because it's a unique cutting pattern compared to the pre-made ones. When doing that in any image editor, when doing that in any vector program, we need to make sure we delete all images that were in this previously. So first I'm gonna go ahead and save this as an editable file so I have it for the future. So I'm gonna save as, Let's go ahead and save this as custom slug. I'm gonna save this as an AI file and click save. This will ensure that I can come back and edit this without having to redo it from scratch. Now that we have this saved, let's go ahead and save our SVG. First, we're gonna take these two image layers we made and we're gonna delete them. And just because I'd like to have things more organized, I'm actually going to take just the square layer I'm going to cut it. I'm going to paste it onto this layer and delete this extra layer. This isn't needed, but I like to have things organized so it works for me. Now we're going to go File, Save As. We're not exporting, we're saving as. We're going to select SVG, use Artboard, and I'm going to name this Custom Slug Cut File and I'm gonna click Save. You'll have a pop-up that looks like this. I'm gonna click More Options, just so you can see the extra options I have selected. The main one to pay attention to is Responsive, and then click OK. Now, unlike that main SVG we used earlier that was already pre-optimized, the Medium Circle Chit one, we need to optimize this one because we've changed it a bit. Let's go ahead and open an SVG optimizer. In this example, I'm gonna use the one in Component Studio. You can also use the one linked here. From Component Studio, click Utilities, SVG Optimizer. And let's drag in our custom slug cut file that we made. Now you'll see each of these already has the NICs included, and that's because we used a pre-made SVG file. All we need to do is optimize this so it cuts in a good order. This will just help reduce the cost overall. 
Click the hamburger icon and then click auto sequence and click start. There we go. We reduced the distance by 46%. Let's go ahead and hit the hamburger icon and save. I've now moved the updated file over. So now we have all the files we need to upload to the site. Let's go ahead and go to your game editor. So from the game editor, if you haven't added already, we're going to go ahead and add some custom punch outs. Click add custom component, punch outs. And for this, we're going to use the small custom punch outs. That's the size that the medium circle chits, if we scroll down, it uses the small chipboard. And because we're using that as our base file, we're going to go small custom punch outs. If the shapes you're using use the medium, use the medium punch outs here. If you use the large, make sure you use the large custom punch outs here. Let's click add to game. You'll see there's an area for a face, a back, and a cut file. Now, if you remember, we made all three of those files. Let's go ahead and open our folder. I'm going to drag these over. Let's start with just our standard medium circle chits. So let's go the face file goes to face. Back file goes to back. And we're going to use the standard cut file we downloaded, that medium circle chit. Drop it on in. I'm just going to name this character tits. And let's go ahead and proof it. Make sure everything looks where we want it to look. And then we can approve. Again, remember the back is flipped left to right. So this looks right. Let's go ahead and approve. So now if we wanted 10 of this slug organized like this, we could order it just like this, adding a quantity of 10. Let's say you wanted five of these and you wanted the other five slugs to be the other one we made, we'll do that. Now, the reason we're doing groups of fives and tens is because you get 10 small slugs per sheet and you always pay by sheets. So you wanna try using those slugs when possible. So let's go here and click add another. This has added another custom punch out to our game. Let's go ahead and upload those files we made before. So let's go with the face file goes to face, back file goes to back. And remember we made this custom cut file. We're gonna go ahead and drop that in as well. Now let's proof this. We have that large square and all of our little characters. Let's approve that. And remember that the back flips. So everything's in the right spot. Let's go ahead and approve that. Now I'm gonna name, I'm gonna name this characters and tile. And so let's say we wanted five of these. Now again, this is a common request when people want to split slugs in certain layouts. So in this case, we would get five of each slug we just made, and we could split them between five copies of the game, or if we just wanted them laid out in a very specific way. This is how we would do that. Let's go back to the game editor, click make. And you'll see we now have five of each or 10 total slugs. If we click cost each, bulk cost each, or production cost, they all go to the same page. You see a breakdown here that we used five slugs, which equals one sheet. I hope this helps you learn how to organize slugs using custom punch outs. Again, I'm Alicia, and thanks for watching.